Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to talk about the ADS 1256 24-bit AD converter again. I have several videos uh, on this circuit and I even have a playlist so please check the description of the video. But now I made some improvements uh, in my code so I would like to share them uh, with you. So hopefully those improvements will help you to use this AD converter in a better and faster way. So as you can see it uh, also on this uh, picture that I'm showing right now, uh, this is a very simple circuit. So I just directly connected the ADS1256 uh, circuit to a STM32 blue pill uh, microcontroller and I'm using the standard SPI pins plus a few additional pins for powering the ADC and uh, switching certain pins or reading certain pins uh, on it. But there is nothing extra fancy uh, about this. And I also made a small, let's say, product out of this uh, circuit, which is a 8-4 channel uh, AD converter, which is capable of uh, measuring 8 or 4 channels uh, simultaneously, depending on your uh, settings. And it communicates with the uh, computer. And it also has a client software, which communicates with the microcontroller and the AD converter and then it captures the data and visualizes it and also it saves it into a file. But uh, let's uh, talk about the uh, source code and the improvements uh, which are more important than uh, this picture. So this is the Arduino code and since I have a bunch of videos about uh, all tiny details I will not focus on every line here but uh, I just tell you very quickly what is what. So. I uh, talk about uh, the pins which I'm using, so I will emphasize that I'm using the standard SPI pins on the STM32 blue pill. So these are those pins which I'm using. And then the additional pins are defined here. So we have a reset pin on this particular uh, board, and uh, that is connected to the PA3 pin. And then we have the data ready pin, which is in every different types of ADS1256 uh, uh, boards, so that is common. And that is used on the PA2 uh, terminal of the microcontroller. And then we have this power down, or sometimes it's also called uh, sync. And uh, this is uh, connected to the 3.3 volt or connected to the PA1 uh, pin, which is then defined as an output and uh, pulled high. So then, since we are using the SPI uh, communication between the microcontroller and the AD converter, we need the SPI uh, library, so that's what I add here. And then within the setup we have to initialize the serial port, and then I have a few functions which take care of the initialization of this uh, microcontroller. So I will tell uh, some more about uh, these things a bit later. And then we have the attach interrupt uh, part, which is the most important part uh, in this code. Uh, this is one of the new things. Now I'm not uh, reading the pin status with a digital uh, read, but I am using the attach interrupt. So I listen to the data ready pin of the AD converter uh, with, uh, with this interrupt uh, function. And then whenever that goes low, that's why I'm using falling here, then the check the ready uh, function is triggered and then we will do something there. So what we have down here is a bunch of variables that I'm using in the code and most of these are already introduced in other different videos. So once again check the playlist and then I'm talking about all the tiny details of this AD converter in several videos. But one of the most important thing is here. So now I'm storing this uh, boolean variable, which is the data ready variable in a volatile uh, type. So what this does is it allows uh, the variable uh, to be changed uh, outside the main loop. So then uh, this means from our perspective that uh, the value of this data ready uh, variable can change in the interrupt and therefore uh, the Arduino will take care of this variable in a different way and uh, this will help us to use it as we want to use it. 
more details about that uh, later. And uh, then I store the reference voltage of this AD converter uh, board. Uh, this is just uh, for one of the functions which uh, shows the voltage directly on the serial port. And then here you can see the definition of the pins for the chip select, for the data ready, for the reset, and also if you have this uh, power down or sync uh, pin, uh, then you can also define that. But in my case, that is uh, again connected to the 3.3 volt, and then uh, I solved everything with that. We have a bunch of registers here, so we want to store the address of the register that we want to write or read. Uh, then we have another value which is storing the value of the register that we read from the AD converter. Another is storing the value of the register uh, which we want to update. So this is the value that we will write on the certain selected register on the AD converter. Uh, the register data here is storing the output of the conversion. So this will at the end store a 24-bit uh, conversion value. Uh, the direct command is just a number which stores a direct command on the in the data sheet of this uh, AD converter there are several direct commands and that you can send uh, to the AD converter and uh, change its behavior according to those commands. We have this print message. Uh, this does nothing uh, particular, but uh, I wanted to print a large piece of text on the serial terminal and I was using this uh, string variable to store that whole bunch of text as a string. Then uh, this is again, or these, again uh, some kind of update uh, as compared to my previous code. So now I store the conversion values in arrays and there are three different types of arrays because there are three different let's say strategies to create a conversion value. So one which will be used for the first is when you are measuring a single channel continuously. This is when you can use the device at its maximum 30 KSPS speed. So you can use the 30 KSPS only at one channel because when you start to use the multiplexing then uh, because of this multiplexing process uh, the acquisition rate drops down to like 4.3 kilohertz. So that's the maximum when you want to cycle to uh, maximum eight channels. But if you are not cycling to the channels and you are reading just one single channel, you can use it at the highest speed. And for that, I'm using this uh, three item long uh, array and uh, it will store three bytes, which is just the 24 bit number uh, in byte, one byte uh, chunks. And then when we are reading the differential output, then we can cycle through maximum four channels. And therefore we have four times three bytes or four 24 bit numbers. Therefore we have to store 12 items in it. And then when we cycle through all the eight channels, when we are using this thing in a single ended mode, then we have eight times three bytes or eight times 24 bits. And therefore we have this uh, single buffer. And then I have this start time, which only serves uh, test purposes. Uh, you actually don't need it in the code. So then in the main loop, uh, we will have a very simple uh, communication uh, strategy. And by communication, I just mean the communication between the computer and the microcontroller. So what happens here is that the microcontroller expects a character to show up on the serial port and then it reads it and uh, puts it in the variable called common character and that uh, variable is used in a long switch case uh, statement and uh, based on that character uh, we can trigger certain functions and I'm not going to too much details because I already explained these things, how they work, but I just tell what is what. So you can read a certain register here and all you need to do is send the letter R plus the number of the register 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. And you can do the same with the W, but then you write. So you have to send the W, the number of the register and then the value that you want to write on the register. If you send the letter T, 
then this message will appear on the serial terminal. This was just for some testing purposes. If you send a capital O, then you get one single value on the serial terminal and uh, you, will sh you will see both uh, the row value and the converted wattage. With the capital R, you reset the AD converter. With the small s, you issue the S uh, data C or stop data continuously uh, command and therefore any kind of acquisition will be stopped. Capital A uh, reads one single channel that you previously selected continuously. This is a high speed uh, communication. Uh, capital C is cycling through all eight single ended channels and puts the values on the serial terminal. Then the capital D does the same, but with the differential channels. So in this case, you only have four uh, channels. Uh, small d is for the direct command. The data sheet contains several direct commands that you can send to the AD converter, and this is how you do it. And then uh, I define the function uh, which contains my favorite values for the AD converter. So whenever I uh, want to quickly jump to those, I just send a capital U uh, to the microcontroller, and that will uh, set up the AD converter yeah, with my favorite values. So then uh, this function here, the first one, is the check the ready uh, function, which is an interrupt related function. So whenever the data ready goes low, then we enter this function wherever we are in the code anyway, and we set the data ready value to true. And this is why it needs to be volatile, because uh, wherever we are in the main loop, uh, then uh, this will be changed. And sometimes we are sitting in the middle of the code and waiting uh, for this uh, value to be changed from false to true, because that will allow us to do uh, certain parts of the acquisition. So uh, this happens here. And uh, before moving on, I just want to show you a few signals, how they look like uh, when you are reading the data ready pin with an oscilloscope. And uh, you can see an example, for example, for 10 hertz. So when you set the acquisition rate to 10 hertz, uh, this is how the uh, signal of the data ready pin looks like. So it's high until a certain time, and then it goes low and stays low for quite a long time. And then it goes high again, and so on and so on. And then this is how it looks like at 30 kilohertz, so at the maximum uh, acquisition rate. So I, of course, uh, changed the horizontal division of the scale, so they might differ a little bit, but uh, they, uh, they do the same in every uh, sampling rates. So data already goes high, and then it goes low, and then it goes high, and then it goes low, and so on and so on. So when we uh, take a closer look of this, uh, you can see how long this uh, pause is when the data already is high. And also, actually, of course, you can read the uh, frequency of the sam sampling frequency uh, by just measuring the distance between two uh, data ready uh, signals. And uh, then you can also see the behavior of it uh, during acquisition. So now you can see that uh, the data ready is higher for quite a long period of time, and then it goes low for just a very short uh, period of time. And actually, uh, from this and also from the data sheet, you can actually understand how this thing works. So when the conversion is going on and the AD converter is uh, crunching the numbers and uh, trying to put it on the uh, output of it, the register, then uh, the data ready is high and that sort of indicates that the conversion is running. And then the data ready goes low, then the AD converter indicates that, hey, I have the data available, please read it. And then uh, in that uh, time window, you have the opportunity to catch uh, the 24-bit number and uh, then, for example, send it to the computer from the microcontroller. But if you run out of this time, then uh, everything just goes on. So the last conversion value is discarded. Data already goes high again. So a new conversion will be uh, created. And then data already goes low again and you will have the opportunity to catch the number again. So I hope that from this you get the idea that uh, whenever the data ready goes 
uh, law, then as fast as possible you have to go there and uh, catch the numbers uh, from the registers and uh, fetch the conversion values. So this is why it's very time critical to have a very fast uh, update regarding the status or the value of the data ready uh, pin. And uh, this is one part uh, why I updated my code. So the interrupt is supposed to be faster than uh, standing in the code and polling the pin with the digital read function. But also, uh, since you have just a limited amount of time uh, to get to catch those data, uh, you want to do this fast and then also you want to send the data to the computer fast and the serial.println or the serial.print uh, functions just fail to do this uh, above a certain uh, sampling frequency. So I have a sort of a solution for this as well. So moving on, we have the read register uh, function here and I just speed run through it because I have another video where I dedicate uh, my whole attention to this. But technically what you have to do, you have to start the SPI communication, then you have to pull the chip select pin to low that indicates to the ADC that uh, something we are going on. So it should expect uh, some kind of data moving or some kind of data transfer um, when the clock is uh, being clogged basically. And uh, what we do is we just combine the register address with the command, uh, the read register command, and then we send in an empty second uh, part of the command byte because you can send two commands uh, simultaneously. We wait a little bit and then we send in some random value to shift out uh, the value of the uh, register. And then we finish the transaction by pulling the chip select to high so that will indicate to the AD converter that we are finished. And finally, the function returns the value of the register. Then uh, we have the write register function. So what we have here, we previously read the register that we wanted to write. And we read the value that we want to write on the register. So chip select goes low again. We have to wait. Then uh, we have the write command here, and that is com combined with the address of the register. Then we send in some empty values, and then we send in uh, the value of the register that we want to have. And that's all. And we don't get anything in return because we were writing the register. Uh, then we have this reset ADS1256. This is the manual reset of the wall uh, AD converter. So this is just how the command uh, sequence goes on. So chip cell goes down as usual when we, whenever we want to do something through the SPI, we wait, we transfer the reset command, and then we wait, S data C command, and then we wait again, and chip select goes high. So this will uh, erase or reset all the registers and everything goes to default. Uh, initialize ADS1256. This was a function made by me and this is just something that we usually uh, write in the setup uh, part but I did not want to have all the mess in the setup so I just wrote everything here. So we know that the chip select pin has to be output and then uh, I just set it to low here and also we have a data ready pin and that is an input because we are reading it. We also have a reset pin and that's an output and uh, what we do here is we do a reset right now which is another way of doing a reset other than a command. We pull the reset pin to low, wait a little bit and there is a defined time for this in the data sheet and then uh, we pull it back to high and just wait uh, half a second just for uh, waiting something and uh, the AD converter is set to its default values. So this happens when you really just start the uh, microcontroller. And then we also need to start the SPI in general. Uh, then we have the read single function. This was uh, triggered when we sent an O letter to the microcontroller. So in the beginning, the register data is set to zero. So if anything goes uh, funny, then uh, that will be at least zero. 
and we start the SPI communication and also we have to uh, pull the chip select pin to low and here we wait for the data ready variable to become uh, true so while it is false we are just running in this empty function and when it becomes true then it uh, steps out and we continue our way down here so we send an R data command we wait 7 microseconds and then we start to shift out the data so first uh, we read it and then we shift it to the left by 8 so we free up the first 8 uh, bits again so then we read the second part the mid byte and uh, combine it with the previous value and then we shift these two numbers to the left by 8 bits again and uh, finally we combine the number with the last chunk of our conversion value so we have something like this uh, as the structure in one of my video I explained how this works in a very very uh, meticulous way so check that video and you will see how this bit shifting uh, goes on how this bit shifting goes on especially in this case so that will help you hopefully and here what I do I just print the raw data so actually this conversion data uh, or conversion value and I also wrote a function which just converts the value of this into a voltage uh, value so it's a human readable number and then we are finished so chip select goes high and the transaction is finished so now comes one of the big uh, improvements uh, which allows me to read data reliably at high uh, sampling rate so in this function we are reading one single channel continuously so we are expecting 30 ksps uh, speed here so as usual we start the spi communication and pull the chip select low and then i'm not using these but you can use this if you want uh, i use these two uh, numbers to measure the time and measure the amount of data sent uh, to the microcontroller or to the computer so here again we are waiting for the data ready to go low and then we issue this rdataC command which is the read data continuously command and then uh, we wait 7 microseconds and we enter uh, basically an infinite loop which is uh, only broken when there is a character S coming from the serial terminal so there are two ways uh, I did here again just a test you can use this uh, direct port access to pull the value or pull the port uh, where you have the data ready pin so this is reading the A2 uh, pin but uh, this is not too reliable uh, and this was just a test but I still tell this to you as, a, as an example so you can do this uh, but what seems to be reliable is still this so this is one of the improvements is that I'm waiting for the interrupt to change the value of the data ready to true and then we can move on uh, to these parts of the code so when data ready becomes true then we start to fill in the buffer and uh, that's why we have the three long uh, buffer so we have three bytes this contains the MSB the mid byte and the LSB and then we dump uh, this number immediately on the serial uh, port but by using the write function instead of the print function so this will just uh, dump binary data so then you have to have uh, something on your computer which can then translate this into a human readable number and after this happened here uh, the data already has to go false so we set it to false manually and then whenever a new interrupt comes then uh, this function can run again because after this this is just uh, the test part of the code uh, I can even hide this because it's not important now but uh, after this uh, thing is finished then uh, we reach the end of the code so the code will uh, basically stand here until the data ready is not changed to true again and then it can go on and write it on the serial terminal and then go back and so on and so on 
So then after we broke the while loop, so this thing, we exited this thing, uh, we enter this part. So we just send an sdatac command uh, to the uh, AD converter, and then we just finalize the communication with the AD converter. So then uh, we can cycle through the single-ended channels. So I have a variable called cycle uh, that will be important for us later. And then we have to start the serial communication again. So chip select pin goes low and so on and so on. And we have, first of all, an infinite loop of while so that you can see that goes down until uh, this part. Uh, but inside that, we also have a for loop, uh, which allows us to cycle through all the eight channels of the single-ended output uh, channels. So what we do here uh, starts here. So first of all, uh, we wait for the data ready. Then uh, we select a channel based on the iteration of the for loop. And then we synchronize, then we wait, then we send a wake up command to the AD converter. And immediately after that, we issue an R data command. And then we have to wait. And then finally, uh, we can read out uh, the rest of the conversion values. And here I have to rely on the loop as well, because we are reading eight channels and we have a buffer sized 24. And based on that, uh, we have to know where we put the certain numbers. So in the, f in the zero iteration, uh, this becomes zero, this becomes one, this becomes two. In the first iteration, this becomes three, four, five. In the second or uh, number two iteration, which is the third uh, iteration, this becomes six and then seven and eight and so on and so on. And then here we put uh, the data ready false. And then after this, we jump back to the beginning of the, of the for loop. So again, we wait for the data ready. And then now let's say the cycle equals one. So we update the selected channel that we are reading. And then uh, again, synchronize, wake up, and then our data, and then we actually read the, the conversion. And after this happened eight times, so we read all the eight single-ended channels, uh, we dump the content of that channels uh, on the serial port again by using the serial write. And after this is done, we are in the while loop. So then everything starts over from zero. So cycle equals zero. And then we open one channel and then we uh, do the conversion and we do it, do it over and over. And when we exit this, we just set the chip select pin to high and uh, then finish the transaction. And then we can do exactly the same uh, what we did here, but with the differential ports. So nothing is really different. Uh, just to be sure, I put the chip select pin to low and then uh, I want to force uh, the AD converter to start from the first channel. So I select the A in zero and A in one uh, channels as input channels. And then I just, uh, yeah, sort of wiggle the chip select pin. So I finish the transaction of this command, but then I'm getting ready for the next one. And then we enter an infinite loop and then we enter a for loop as well. But here the cycle goes until three. So zero, one, two, three. And again, we wait for data ready. Uh, we preload the next uh, channel that we will read. And then we synchronize, wake up, issue an R data, wait, and then we do the same. MSB, uh, mid byte, and LSB. And then this goes false. And then the next iteration will select this channel and then uh, print uh, the values into the buffer and so on and so on. And finally, when the four iterations are done of the for loop, mm, this prints the content of the buffer on the serial port. And if we end uh, the while as well, then we just finish the sequence and uh, finish the SPI transaction. And then we have a direct command. 
So this is what is in the data sheet. There is nothing else than we just pull the chip select low, wait, send the direct command, wait, pull the chip select high. So everything is done. And then uh, this is the function which I told you that uh, is written by me as like uh, some kind of predefined uh, values, which is just a collection of my favorite values that I like to use when I start up the AD converter. So I write uh, to all these uh, registers, so the status, the multiplexer, the AD con uh, registers, and also to the D rate uh, uh, register is also updated here. And then I also send a direct command, which just calibrates the offset and the self uh, gain. A and that's all. But this is just uh, something that you can change also based on the requirements that you want to have. And then I uh, mentioned this uh, long string, which is then combined here. And what I'm basically do is I just uh, wrote a message, which tells you the role of uh, most of these commands that I'm using in the beginning of the code. So then it tells what uh, the certain characters uh, do. And then when this uh, bunch of strings are combined together, then they are just printed on the serial terminal and then it's done. This just runs once in the setup uh, function. And finally, I have this convert to voltage uh, function, which accepts uh, 32-bit uh, number in its argument. So then this is technically the output of the AD conversion. And what is happening here is that first we have to decide whether this is a negative or a positive number. Uh, we know that if the very uh, first, so the highest bit of this 24-bit uh, number is one, then that indicates that that's a negative number. So then we have to sort of mirror it around the zero by subtracting this number from the actual value of this number. And then that data becomes our number, which is then uh, converted into a real voltage. And just as a side note, uh, this formula only works when the PGA value is zero. Otherwise, you have to uh, divide the voltage by this number. So if your PGA is one, so you are in the plus minus 2.5 volt voltage range, then you actually have to divide the result of this calculation by two. In the next PGA value, you divide it by four. In the next next, you divide it by eight and so on and so on. And finally, this function just prints the voltage with eight digits, which is maybe too much, but uh, this is what we do here. So coming back uh, to the uh, high speed part of this code. So instead of using the serial.print uh, or serial.print uh, ln uh, commands, which are relatively slow as compared to the write, uh, here I'm using buffers to store the value of the bytes and then I print them with the serial.write. And then also the other feature, of course, is that I'm reading the status of the uh, data ready pin. Uh, by an interrupt uh, function. And that's supposed to be uh, reliable and fast. But then uh, I also want to show you some software that I developed for this thing, and it works uh, relatively well. So let's go through that uh, right now. So the software can be seen here, and I introduced a similar thing to you in some previous uh, videos, but this is even better. So what you see here, this is the chart area where we plot the numbers that we are reading from the AD converter. And then on the right hand side, we can select the device. I have already connected it. It is located on the COM8. And then uh, there are some values for the board rates, but here I'm just using the highest that I uh, predefined. So then I can connect uh, to this uh, microcontroller by just pressing uh, this connect button. And then several other options became available because now we established the communication with the microcontroller. So two most important things. We can select the sampling rate. This is based on the data sheet of the microcontroller or the AD converter, sorry. And then uh, this is the PGA values. So this is how you can uh, pre or redefine uh, the voltage uh, ranges that you want to use. 
And then uh, this measurement length means that if you check this checkbox and write some number here in minutes, then after that minute uh, is over, then the measurement will automatically stop. This is just some comfort function that I wanted to have. And then the time window means that uh, on the x axis of the chart, there will be this amount of seconds of data shown only. So let's say you want to have 10 seconds of data, then you have your 10 most recent seconds shown in this window. And then when the 11 second data comes in, then the first second here is being shifted out to the left. So you don't see that anymore. And then the 11, uh, 11 point uh, shows up on the right side. So that's what these do. So the chart will move continuously and that's good because you don't uh, have an overcrowded chart and uh, also saves a lot of memory because this uh, chart tends to eat a lot of memory when it contains uh, a lot of data because in the background uh, you have some sort of series which uh, store uh, the data uh, presented on the chart and uh, you just keep more and more data in them so of course they eat a lot of memory and then you can save everything into a file so you have to just check this checkbox write some file name and then the output file will be stored in the same folder as where you have this exe file and also you can add some comments like uh, you want to have some uh, notes for your measurement and so on and then in the bottom part you can see the channels and uh, the acquisition mode and the chart refresh rate. So we have uh, three acquisition modes, single-ended. Then you have all the eight channels available for selection. So you can select which channel you want to show on the chart. And in the differential, of course, we just have four channels. So these are disabled and you cannot do anything with them. And then in the high speed, we have just one channel because in the high speed, you are supposed to use the AD converter at the higher data rates. So then you cannot uh, cycle through the channels because that uh, have a detrimental effect. In fact, uh, I have the single-ended and differential modes and here you will be able to choose different uh, data rates. And that is based on the, on the table, which is pu published in the data sheet of this ADS-1256. So this is the uh, throughput uh, frequency, which you see here. So actually, if you are using uh, multiplexing on this ADS-1256, even though you choose the highest sampling rate, which is 30 uh, kilo samples per second, uh, you cannot go higher than 4.3 uh, kilohertz. So this will be your maximum uh, frequency of sampling when you are using uh, multiplexing. So therefore, uh, you have to go for the high speed and just one channel. And the refresh rate here, I just uh, defined very few simple values. So what this does is it takes always the most recent data from the AD converter and puts it on the chart. And uh, this is also used for like memory and uh, processor speed saving because you don't want to uh, dump all the 30,000 points on your chart and so on. So this will just put, let's say, 10 points per second on your chart, which is much more economical than putting, let's say, 10,000 on it. Uh, we can clear the chart. I will show how that works. And here we have a few other uh, details, uh, numbers per sec. So this will actually show you the real-time speed of the uh, AD converter. So whenever uh, you see the numbers this, and whenever you see these numbers uh, changing, that will actually show you how many numbers uh, were captured from the AD converter. And uh, then they will actually end up on the computer. And the elapsed time, this is just the elapsed time uh, of the acquisition. So in App talk, uh, I will just show you something. I want to save this into a file just to show you how the output looks like. And uh, I set the sampling rate to the highest one. So now we are at 30 kilohertz uh, sampling rate and we have one single channel and uh, we just refresh the chart here uh, 10 times a second. So everything is fine. And I have a small potentiometer uh, connected to this uh, 
first channel with the three watts input voltage so I will change the potentiometer and then we will see how this chart looks like. So first of all I, I started the acquisition and everything got disabled and this is just to make the software foolproof sort of because if you start to modify these during the measurement uh, then that can lead to some confusions or the software will just simply crash or the data will become corru corrupted. So what you see here is this is the real-time voltage that you read and it's a bit noisy as you can see but not too much noisy because if you see this is just uh, 15 millivolts uh, roughly uh, noise. Uh, for me right now this is acceptable and here you see the data rate and uh, this is one of my problem so I still I am still not able to reach the maximum 30,000 kilo samples per second so there is still uh, 5 kilo uh, samples per second is missing but at least I could establish let's say 24 kilo samples per second uh, stable uh, acquisition rate so now yeah now I'm just uh, playing around with the potentiometer so go up go down and so on and so on so I can draw with it and of course I can go down So yeah, it works as you can see. So let's uh, stop this first. And now uh, this is uh, stopped and I can show you the output file. So this is the output file. Uh, I have a little header in it. So I know which mode was used, what was the sampling rate, PGA, and if I had any comments and so on and so on. And here, uh, the time is not really the real time, but uh, it's just a row number, let's say. So each row in this uh, data file has its own uh, serial number. And then you can see that if I go to the end, then uh, within this 88 seconds, we captured like almost 2.1 million uh, points. So here I calculated the actual sampling rate based on the number of actually captured data. So in this text file we have all the data which uh, came in in the past 88 seconds. But this is not entirely precise because this 88 seconds is a tiny bit off because when I start uh, the, the acquisition or more precisely when I press the start button here the acquisition doesn't start immediately but the timer starts. Uh, immediately so this is roughly 86 or 87 seconds instead of 88 and uh, therefore this number is a bit higher but what I try to say here is that we have all data so actually every data which came in the serial port from the AD converter uh, is captured in this data file but here due to saving some resources we just plot uh, every one tenth of the second uh, so much less data is shown uh, here so yeah this is much more data and actually this file here is uh, 54 megabytes uh, long so it's a lot of lot of lot of uh, numbers yeah, as you can see 2.1 million numbers almost so then uh, coming back to the clear chart button then that should remove the chart and then what we can also do just for fun we can try uh, the four channel acquisition and now as you can see we have a bit lower amount of uh, sampling frequency at the maximum but I just select something really random and then I start so if I start acquisition so as you can see data is coming in and these are not grounded so they have some uh, funny numbers and they are a little bit influenced by the uh, actual channel channel number one which is the real value here if I start to move the potentiometer upwards so as you can see uh, this increased the voltage and uh, this channel also went together with it uh, because it's a tiny bit influenced uh, by the uh, neighboring channel and actually the data sheet of this AD converter mentions that if you are not using the channel it is preferred to tie it to the ground and that actually solves uh, the problem because if you tie it to the ground uh, 
then that will make it uh, zero for real. So then it, it should be normal. But since now they are floating, even if I put my finger on, on these uh, pins, uh, then the value is supposed to change. So I just do that now. And as you can see, I can change it with my finger. But of course, uh, the data is not changing for that pin, uh, which is tied to some kind of voltage output. So those are not influenced. But the f floating legs, as you can see, uh, they are influenced. So I stop this. And uh, one more feature I want to show you is this time window, because I think that's a fun uh, feature. So I just reset everything. So now we have to wait like 10 seconds and uh, then this data starts to move out as you can see it now. So if I just do a big bump in this, you will see how it works. And then this saves a lot of uh, memory as well because uh, the chart doesn't have to store a lot of data on, on the display. So that's very nice. And also you can capture like slower signals with this, but uh, it cannot really be used as an oscilloscope because it's not really synchronized uh, to the to the signals uh, frequency or the signals uh, change. We are just printing always the latest value. So every one tenth of the second, we just print something. And uh, because of this, uh, method, we cannot really use it as an oscilloscope yet. And uh, also, as you can see, as I said, in the differential mode or the single-ended mode, when you have uh, multiplexing or when you are cycling through the channels, uh, you cannot reach uh, the original one or single channel output rate. And because of that, I changed the numbers inside the sampling rate. And now this is the data sheet uh, provided uh, sampling rate. And you can see here how many numbers are coming in. So they are very close uh, to each other. So basically this was the, the video. I just wanted to show you this new method of uh, creating the output and the new method of capturing the status of the data ready pin. And also I wanted to show you this kind of uh, data logger. Uh, this is specifically created for this kind of environment. By environment, I mean ADS-1256 with an Arduino-based microcontroller. And it more or less works uh, well. I still need to do some small adjustments, but this is very close to a ready uh, product. If you are interested in this uh, software and also if you are interested in that uh, metallic box uh, logger, uh, you can reach me through my website. I have some contact uh, details there and uh, we can discuss the details. But uh, you are free to use uh, the source code. It will be on my website. So the Arduino source code that you see here uh, is, as you can see, it's commented and I explained everything in the video. So this is shared and uh, free to access. Uh, so I hope that uh, you can use this uh, for your own projects. So basically this was all. Once again, uh, we focused on the data ready pin and focused on the buffers and the serial dot write. And that uh, solved most of my problems because now I can use the higher uh, data rates to uh, capture data from the ADS-1256. So I hope this video was useful and I hope the resources are useful. Uh, please once again check the description because every details are listed there. And I hope you learned something and see you in the next video.